Turn to 1 Samuel 16, starting at verse 1. When you have it, say amen. amen. The word of God says, Now the Lord said to Samuel, You have mourned long enough. Familiar scripture, but don't miss the revelation. For Saul, I have rejected him as king of Israel, so fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Pacific instructions. You need laser focus as you cross over and close out one and move into another one. Come on, somebody. Find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. But Samuel asked, how can I do that? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. And then God told my God, uh, Samuel, to take a helper with you. The Lord replied and said that you have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse, strategic, invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you which one of his sons to anoint for me. Verse 4 says, so Samuel did as the Lord instructed. When, the, when he arrived at Bethlehem, I got a little echo and son, the elders of the town came trembling to meet him. What's wrong, they asked. Do you come in peace? Verse 5 says, yes, Samuel replied, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Did y'all catch that? Purify yourself. You just can't come in the presence of a king any kind of way, church. You got to consecrate yourself when you come before God. That's why you and I have to always say, God, clean up my heart. Forgive me for my sins. Wash my mind, Lord. Take this mess up off me. Forgive me for the things I've said, for the things I've thought. My God, you just can't come before God any kind of way. Oh, my God, we have lost our reverence in the body of Christ as a whole around the country. It, we feel like we can just approach God any kind of way. That's it. My God. Mm. Then Samuel performed the purification rite for Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Verse 6, when they arrived, Samuel took one look at Elab and thought, surely, uh, my God, this is the Lord's anointed. What did God show me right there? Even a prophet could miss it. Come on, Pastor. So quit holding people, make thinking everybody's perfect. Even a prophet missed it. Because yeah. he looked with the natural eye instead of the spiritual eye. Yeah. A lot of you get disappointed and quit and shut down because somebody that you was looking to and holding them as God failed. On, Even a prophet failed. Yeah, 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 yeah. spoke there. The Lord said, but verse 7, but the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by the appearance height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. My God, I'm so full. People see things as they are, not as they are. People see things as they are, not as they are. So if you defile, you're going to see everything from defilement. The Bible says to the pure, they see things pure. Right. To the defile, they see everything from the defile mentality or perception. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Father God, I thank you now. We're going to stop there. Father God, bless the service tonight. Yeah. Speak to the people tonight. Encourage. Drop principles. Let your apostolic father and anointed be on me tonight. Get in the way so I can get out of the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want you to get, make sure you get pen and paper out. My God, I'm going to stop right there because we are familiar with uh, 1 Samuel 16, 1 through 13. We know what that's about. That go, that's down go Goliath. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Let's give God a hand for down go Goliath. You see, you can't clap because you're still letting that same giant mock you. For those who killed some giants, my God, let's give God a hand tonight. God is always getting us ready for something, church. You got to understand that. Anytime you're walking with a holy God and a holy king, you can't hold God to the same methods in the same ways. You got to stay flexible mentally, my God, when you're walking with God. Many people get in trouble when they try to hold God, my God, to a certain system, or a certain rule, or a certain way. And when God begins to shift and move because they're so used to God moving and operating in a certain way, when God begins to move, they don't want to move. Because they think, well, surely that's not God because he used to doing it this way. Never put God in a box and God don't always operate the same. Now, his principles, my God, never change, my God, but his methods do. See, somebody should have wrote that down. God's principles never change. His character never change, but his methods and how he do stuff always change. What he did yesterday, he ain't going to do today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. So God is always getting you and I ready for something. And that's what the Spirit of God is getting ready to do for you tonight. Get you ready for something. Mm. The seasons we are in is preparing us for our next season. The season right now you are in. Like they say, whatever you, my God, whatever, however you conduct yourself today is preparing you for your future tomorrow. 
Whatever you allow to defeat you and mock you and stay attached to you, welcome to your tomorrow. Whatever you don't like that's going on in your now, if you don't kill it, my God, it's coming over to tomorrow if the Lord delay is coming. So many of us are frustrated about stuff, my God, that God has told us to kill and let go. That season in many of our lives is over. It's time for a new season. But you know, you can cross over from summer to winter and the seasons change, but if your mind don't change, you're going to still be stuck. Shifting has to do with your mind. Preparation for a new season has to do with your mind. Everything starts in the mind. So we could cross over giving God the glory to 2019, my God, because guess what? Every, all the baggage and all the giants that's in 2018 are step right over in 2019, which is because you didn't kill it in 2018. God is trying to get you prepared, and I prepared as well as the church, my God, for another season. Mm. And the next season will be different and bring about his own challenges. Understand that each season has new challenges. Life is one continuous cycle of seasons. Summer, winter, fall. Come on. Don't you know it could be, it could be winter, but you could be in the summer in your life in the natural? Just mm-hmm. because it's winter in the natural don't mean it's winter in your life. That's right. Oh, my God. It could be winter in the natural. You can be budding and prospering and blooming. In the... yeah. yes, Lord. <laughs> like your pastor. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every season is built upon the previous one. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Just like the classes. Doing something with your mind, missing ingredient. Once you get your mind renovated, then you move to understanding your purpose and your potential, mm-hmm. which formulates you and gets you in position to start operating and functioning, my God, at another level in life. Right. And then once you start understanding your purpose and your potential, then you got to allow, my God, the next class, the spirit of leader, you got to become a leader. You know what I'm trying to say? Everybody has the leadership potential, but you got to build and cultivate the spirit of a leader. All of you have leadership potential in you, but are you building it? Are you cultivating it? Leadership is self-discovery. When you discover the leader within you, you discover yourself. Mm. A lot of you are frustrated because you ain't discovered the leader that's on the inside. You don't start living until you start operating in purpose. You just exist. Until you know what your purpose is, until you serve your purpose to the world, you just exist then. You could be 45 and have grandkids and great-grandkids at 45 and still don't know who you are. That's right, that's right. That's why it's critical that you find your purpose. Many of you went through the class, but you still don't know. What you're called to do, because when you understand what your purpose is, and when you start operating your purpose, you don't waste time. Right. Oh, my God, you don't let anybody come get in your life. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, if you ain't helping me move to my purpose, then you are not qualified to be in my life. That don't mean I'm better than you. I'm just carrying on a great work. I can't get nobody to say nothing. I'm headed somewhere, and you're going to slow me down, baby. I'm in purpose. My God, I ain't got time to be playing. I only have a limited amount of time on this earth. Jesus had 33 years with the disciples, and he got it done every day. You got to be strategic, and you got to be laser focused, my God, because you only have a certain measure of time. Quit taking your time for granted. Don't you know that God, the most precious commodity that God gave mankind is time? When that knock, knock coming, whatever God going to be required of you, when he knock, you ain't got time to say, okay, God, let me go back and go to class. Let, 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 let me go back and do what I knew I was supposed to do, but I kept putting it off, my God, because I wanted to party and kick it, and I want to have a form of godliness with no power. Now let me, because God said it's too late. Now it's time to pay the piper. Then you got to stand before God the day you was born, hyphen, and the day you leave. God going to judge us for that hyphen that's on your headstone. That little bitty hyphen going to tell you. That's the books that's being opened. I can't get nobody to say nothing. That hyphen. What is your hyphen going to speak about when you stand before God? So the, the title of this sermon is Preparation for Our Next. What do you want your next to look like? That's a dangerous question, Minister Barry, to ask somebody, what do you want your next to look like? Because we have all type of, my God, perceptions. We have all type of dreams and visions, my God, that we want our next to look like, Minister Cynthia. But have we asked God, God, what do you want my next to look like? Do you see how the Spirit of God set you up? You know what you want your next to look like, but what do God want your next to look like? You know what you want 2019 to look like, but what do God want your 2019 to look like? See, I just took you right back to purpose. See, you got to get out the way and let the kingdom of God get in the way. It's not your will or my will, it's God's will. And when you let God's will be done, I promise you, my God, that, my God, called divine connections, favor, blessings, unexpected checks in the mail, divine connections, different stuff will begin to happen. Stuff will begin to open, my God, when you're in God's will. That's right. That's it. Preparation for the next. 
Oh, my God. Oh, there's reconstruction going on, my God, behind the scenes. <laughs> there's things that's happening, my God. Some of y'all may have already spoke to your 12. My God, there's reconstruction going on, my God. We reformulating the model, my God. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And some of the team is back there in my office right now meeting, my God. There's a whole lot of work going on, man. Preparation for 2019 while you and I are sitting in here. There's strategic meetings. Uh, come on, somebody. Strategic prayers. Leadership is praying, my God, because we worked in 2018. Some of that can't go into 2019. Right. Oh, with our tolerated 18 ain't going over in 2019, yeah. baby. It's always preparation. Yeah. Oh, my God. Somebody give God a hand. Yeah. Oh, my God. You got to somebody say shift. Yeah. Come on. Somebody say it again. Shift. Yeah. Oh, my God. When you're talking about shift, you got to be open to new wine. Come on, Jesus said, I can't give you new wine. I can't pour new wine in the old wine skins. That means old mindsets, old way of doing things, old excuses. My God, all that habitual sin, you asking for new, God said, I can't give you new. You got too much old in you. Get out, out with the old and in with the new. Be ready to receive new revelation. Be ready to receive greater dreams. Be ready to receive a bigger vision. He's trying to give it to you, you're asking for it, but he can't because you're being blocked. Too much stuff going on in our minds. Mm. So put point number one on the screen. There's always preparation to your next, and you got to go through this phase right here. And I'm moving quickly. You can't get to point number three until you uh, until you submit to point number one. See, there's steps. Y'all look at me wherever as y'all write. In order for me to get to the top, I can try to jump to the top, and I might can make it. But there's some things that I was supposed to learn before I jumped all the way to the top. Even though I made it to the top, I made it, my God, and I'm not complete. If I started from the bottom, y'all stay with me now, and jump all the way to the top without taking the steps, I may make it to the top, but there's something that I'm depleted of. Come on, sir. That's good. Because I wanted to process too fast. I jumped, and I can't do what I used to could. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But I can jump all the way to the top, but I promise you, my God, this thing is something. Write this down. There's something called lessons you learn. Along the way, as I teach y'all, you need everything, my God, that God needs to deposit in you so you can be effective at that what God called you to do. You don't ever want to get there and arrive there, my God, unequipped, right. unprepared, because you rushed it. Because you didn't develop in discipleship one, two, and three. Because you blowed off, my God, reading your daily reading every day. Because you ain't in prayer, my God, when you can make it to prayer. Yeah. See, them as lessons. And when you're in God's will, there's people that God will bring across your path that you're supposed to meet. And if I'm out of God's will, my God, then I would have never probably met somebody. Because I'm out of God's will. But because I'm in God's will, my God, I was able to connect with somebody who connected me to somebody. Now I'm connected to somebody. Come on, somebody. I'm going to leave that alone. But you got to be in his will. If I'd have jumped from the bottom to the top, I would have missed the connection that's sitting here. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God, full of principles, baby. Yeah. Somebody give God a hand. I'm trying to teach you right. I'm trying to teach you right. So you got a shadow phase when in preparation for your next. My God, deep lessons I learned in humble places. Deep lessons. Are you missing your lessons because can't nobody tell you nothing? Are you missing your lessons because you're unteachable? We got, I've just licensed and ordained and licensed many people, and I'm not picking on my licensed minister, but don't miss your lesson. Stay humble. As the young pastor told me, I know Pastor Larry, he told me, he said, my God, God is blessed going over Christ Church. You're growing, you're booming, my God. But what did he tell me? Stay small in your own eyes. Oh, my God, that's deep lessons. 40 years of pastoring, my God, and he retired. He told me one thing in the gym. He said, stay small in your own eyes. And I'll never forget it either, and I still am. Deep lessons are learned in humble places. David is behind the scenes learning deep truths in the shadow. My God, he's in the shadow of his brothers. Sometimes it's going to be people out in front. It's okay, my God, to be behind. As long as you're learning your lessons along the way. As long as you get all the importation that God wants for you. See, you're trying to get to the front, but God said, no, you've, this is a season where you need to follow behind your brother instead of trying to be in front of your brother. This is a season where you need to submit instead of trying to take over. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God, David had to be behind his brothers. His brothers was out front, but he was in the back. If he'd have been up front, my God, he'd have missed the lessons in the humble places that would prepare him or disqualify him for the kingship. Learn how to follow. 
from behind sometimes. Yeah. You ain't have to always try to be up here. I promise you, my leaders will tell you, this is not a popular place to be right here. Everybody want to get hurt, but you got to, oh my God, if you knew what the price it was to be right here. Oh, there ain't no glory in this right here. Everything about you is on display. Some of you are voting right now. This is a painful, painful platform, baby. I can't talk about nobody church. I'm talking about this church because we preach Christ over here. We don't preach emotionalism. We preach Christ. This is a painful place because everybody don't want it. Everybody don't want it. They want the platform. They don't want the pain to go with the platform. That's what I'm saying. We want position and prestige, but you don't understand the pain that's connected there. Shadow phase. Shadow phase. David was on the, in the shadow phase writing songs, taking care of sheep, and learning about the nature of God. See, God has a way of teaching you, even when in the natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God, even in the natural, natural things. You don't have to be a Christian to teach you. Don't you know you can learn stuff from a drunk up under a bridge? Don't you know you can pull up at McDonald's on Pierre and Peoria, my God, or wherever it is up there, and sit down with them and brown gravy all of them and teach you a whole lot of stuff. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He was writing songs and learning about the nature of God. The Lord had sought for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord had commanded him to be king over his people. When God sought for this man, as I taught y'all before, he, looked, he, didn't, he, he, he didn't seek him in seminary. He didn't, he didn't seek him sitting on the front row. Boy, he, he, he was on the backside. Mama Donna, where you sitting there? Over there when nobody thought he was nothing. 17-year-old child. He's insignificant in natural eyes. He don't, he's, he's unqualified, Mother Margaret, in the natural. But God said, I look for somebody who had my heart. I look for somebody that's real serious, like this youngster that's up here preaching right now. I'm looking for that person, my God. Not that person that looks good, looked the part, talked the part, got all the education. That ain't who I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody that got some principles that love me more than they love anything else or anybody else. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a different type of person in this hour that I'm living in. He ain't looking for no church people. He's looking for somebody that love him. More than anything. <laughs> oh, my God, y'all need to go with me. My God, are you that person tonight? Is God looking for you or is he sidestepping you? Is he looking past you? Is he looking to that person behind you or the side? Because you know he, you got too many distractions. You too busy, Mar uh, uh, Martha. Martha was too busy, worried about their own things. And Mary was sitting at the feet of Christ. God told Mar Martha, you too worried about stuff. Yeah. Mark, Mary's in the right place, sitting at my feet in the shallow place, my God. And she was criticized. Who thank you, Holy Ghost. She was criticized for sitting in the right place. I said she was criticized like I was. Why are you walking with Bishop McIntyre? Why you sit with that white man? Why are you going to that white man's church where Greenwood was existing? I was criticized for sitting at the right place. Boy, somebody need to catch some revelation. Oh, I'm fooled tonight, baby. Her own sister criticized her. Martha criticized Mary because Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. of Jesus. And she was criticized because she was in position. And Martha was out of position. People always criticize people that's in position. Come on, Janice Jones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're out of position, then you start complaining and, Pastor, and getting contaminated and making excuses and finding fault with the pastors and the ministers. And this Christian, this mess. That ain't kingdom. Won't be welcome here. Somebody give God a hand. Is the Spirit of God helping anybody tonight? Yes, okay, let's go a little deeper then. My God. And so, my God, he's looking for somebody who has his own heart, who has his heart. Mm. The Lord commanded David to be king. Mm. What made David the one, though? Have you ever asked yourself that? Some of you probably have. I'm glad you asked. I'm going to teach you tonight. My God, he was a man after God's own heart. We understand that. But what do that really mean? What does that really mean to be a man, no gender, after God's own heart? What does that mean, Naila Marie Peoples? I'm going to tell you. Let your daddy tell you what it means. It means, my God, that he wanted nothing but the things of God. Didn't nothing else matter. And Bishop taught us this past Sunday when he was over preaching, whatever's, whatever's sitting on your heart, is that what you worship? Y'all missed that Sunday. Yeah. Whatever's sitting on your heart, that's what yeah. you worship. Whatever's sitting on your heart, that's what you bow down to. Come on, somebody. Are you bowing down to idols instead of bowing down to the king of kings? Come on, somebody. What has your heart tonight? What has your affection tonight? Who, oh, my God, did nothing had that young 17-year-old, my God, heart but God. That's why God can say he's a man after my own heart. He was focused at 17. He didn't go through all that mess, my God. When he get 55, then all of a sudden he decided to change. He started as a young man. God called him at a young man and started messing with him at a young man. What's on your heart tonight? 
What got your heart tonight? What's sitting on the throne of your mind tonight? Oh, my God, what's on your throne tonight? What are you worshiping, my God? I know he said we worship with our mouth, but their hearts are really far from me. Oh, my God, we worship God to say heaven come and all that, whatever else we saw, my God. But do you really want heaven to come? You may have said that with your mouth, but your heart, God knows if you really want heaven to come. David wanted nothing but the things of God. When you want the things of God, you ain't got to be told to consecrate. You'll read your Bible. Matthew 5 and 6, my God, my God says, blessed. Who, my God, is the man who hunger and thirsts after righteousness? When you want the things of God, when your heart is fixed and set on God, my God, you got laser focus. When you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you're tired of being defeated, you ready for God to move in your life. My God, ain't nobody got to pump you and prime you to come to church. Ain't nobody got to make you worship. The Bible says those who have been forgiven much, they love much, my God. When you love God, when he's on the throne of your life, my God, ain't nobody got to provoke you, my God. It is what it is, baby. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, who am I talking to in the church? When you love God, you ain't got to be provoked. Stuff come naturally. I don't struggle with reading my Bible. My God, I was reading my Bible way before I became a pastor. I never knew I was called a pastor. You got to develop good habits way before you get a microphone in your hand. Oh, you got to, my God, you got to be that thing you want God to have you to be way before you even get the title. Oh, my God, you can't let the title make you. You got to make the title. Come on, somebody. Oh, did God say that? Shadow phase, shadow phase. You can't get there. Without it, everybody got this. I just didn't arrive. I was telling my son, what school did I? I was telling him in the barbershop today, my God, my gosh, don't despise small beginnings. Yeah. Going on for Christ, going on six years next year if the Lord delay is coming. My God, we just didn't arrive. I know everybody not here tonight, but for five years, we doing okay. Somebody give God a hand in her. Because let me tell you, oh my God, the healthiness of a church ain't got to do no with numbers. It got to do with spiritual formation and development. Oh my God, you can have a thousand, but are they developing spiritually? Do they got a kingdom as they advance in God's kingdom? My God, is their life outside of church affecting somebody? My God, that's what I call healthiness. When your life can influence somebody that's don't, that don't know Christ. It ain't about the numbers, baby. It's not quantity, it's quality. And as you and I develop, you and I, I and you, because I'm right there with y'all. Y'all know that. I'm no better than nobody up in there. But as we begin to develop, we will attract people mm-hmm. that don't know Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Not because we come to church, but because of what we live outside the church. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Diane. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Let your lifestyle speak louder than anything that you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's just good. Hungry for the things of God. When you're hungry for God, you don't backslide. When you're hungry for God, Brian, yes, there is no compromise. There is no plan B, C, D, E, or F. It's all or nothing, my God. Oh, when you're hungry for God, it'll make you put up some stuff. When you're hungry for God, it'll make you stop doing habitual sin. When you're hungry for God, you won't be gambling. Come on, when you're hungry for God, you won't be robbing God what you give it. When you're hungry for God, you're going to read your word. I don't get me started. Oh, my God, you'll let go and forgive when you're hungry for God. Oh, my God, you'll shift in advance when you're hungry for God. You'll walk in a greater measure of love, my God. When you're hungry for God, you'll get to the point like I'm starting to get that I see how unworthy I am. My self-righteousness is filthy rags. Come on, somebody. No matter how many of y'all lead to Christ, no matter how big this church may go, I'm still unworthy, my God. My righteousness is still filthy in God. Come on, somebody. When you're hungry for God, God will show you who you really are. Quit hiding behind your stilettos and your masks and your suits and gaiters. Come on, baby. In fact, let God get to the real core of you. Oh, when you're hungry for God, you'll shift. Somebody say shift. shift. We're talking about preparation for the next. It's a shadow phase. You can't get around it, baby. You can't get around it. You can't get around this one right here. Quit trying to advance until you learn how to submit to the shadow. Until you learn the humble lessons along the way. Especially in the African-American church, one of our biggest struggles is in African-American people, we don't like to submit. We compete with everybody. I ain't in competition with nobody. I wasn't in competition with my spiritual father. I never got in competition with him. It's all good. I ain't in competition with you. I ain't in competition with you either. Because as long as you blessed, that means I'm blessed. Because if I needed you, get me. I can't get nobody to say nothing. Oh, yeah, that's real talk. See, y'all, y'all see, see, you ain't got to be in competition. Called, as I was teaching the woman of God, it's called finding your spot. Late Dr. Miles taught her, when you find you, can't nobody beat you being who you are. You got a spot that only God, my God, God created you with your own spot. When you get in somebody else's spot, now you frustrated. Come on, David was finna go out to war, and Saul tried to put his armor on him. David said, I can't wear this armor. Take this off. Let me get this stuff that I'm used to working with. Uh, God trained me with, with five rocks and a, come on, whatever it is. He, come on, somebody. Quit trying to wear everybody else's armor. Get your own armor. Yes. 
I need you to be blessed. Keep on selling cars, Brian. I like the word J's. Every year you bless me. Come on, somebody. No, I'm being serious. You ain't got to compete. Bless, speak blessings upon your brothers and sisters. They will bless you. I promise you. It ain't nothing I can't get from y'all if I need something. Come on, somebody. I told a man of God I wanted some of that, uh, he had to shift and bulk to the house. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You ain't got to compete with nobody. Your sister will bless. Thank you, Trevette, for all you do for your pastor. You ain't got to compete with nobody. Let the, the most important word in the Bible, L-O-V-E, operate in your mind and in your spirit. And you watch what God do. Some of us is blocking, my God, our blessing because we too bitter. That's it. Walk in love and watch what God do. The shadow phase. David will become one of the greatest men in the Bible. Being mentioned more than 1,000 times in the word of God. More than Abraham, Moses, my God. Mm. More than Abraham and Moses. More than any other New Testament prophet or man of God. David, 17-year-old boy that learned biblical lessons and principles on the backside of the mountain. Yeah. My God, when everybody forgot about him. Yeah. When Sammy called all the brothers and said, Jesse, bring the brothers, he forgot David. Because uh -huh. David was over there, my God, wasn't worried about position, but shoveling sheep done. Yeah, Tending well. sheep. Come on, my God. Oh, my God, carrying on, my God, yeah, faithful yeah. business. Yeah, yeah. Not distracted, carrying on God's business, being faithful to his natural father. Tending the sheep. Ooh, there go a principle right there. He's carrying on, my God, being found. Honor thy father. And thy mother. Now I know some of my mothers and some of our fathers might not have been the best mother and the best father. But it's called rep honoring the position. That is your mama and that is your father. You might not like what they have done, but you honor them. And I promise you, that's what a blessing and a promise. That's Bible. Yeah. Yeah. I know daddy was wasn't there. I know mama tripped out. It's all good, but you still respect her. You watch what God do. It's called honor and respect. I thought Bishop said something about honor and respect this past Sunday. When you honor and respect, regardless of what they've done. You can always find something to be mad about when it comes to your parents, whether they still here or not here, but you still honor them because you're you honoring the word. you committed to the word. See, that's contract would not honor. Covenant you would honor. Contract you would not honor. You'll find an excuse not to honor her because of what she said or what he did. But when you're in covenant with God, because God's a God of covenant, you're going to honor the covenant he made. Honor your father and your mother and respect them, the office, even though they don't deserve it. But them are the ones that God commanded us to love anyway. The unlovable. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. How you, oh, my God. Thank you. God is using your mamas and your fathers, my God, to train you. Yeah. If you can't love them, how are you going to really love her? Yeah. That's your own flesh and blood. So you can't, don't tell me you love, you love me, but you can't. I, I'm looking at you disrespect your mom and your father. I know he wasn't there. I know he might have touched you. I know he might have done something to you. I know he might have beat your mom up and all that. I'm not being insistent, but you still got to honor the office. Yeah. Yeah. I'm teaching yeah. you principles, baby. This is what the books say. This ain't what I say. It's what the books say. Is it cutting? Yes, it's cutting. The word of God cuts going in and coming out, baby. We disqualify ourselves when we don't honor the principles in the word. We pray and God said, you ain't honor me. Honor me means honor that position of your mom and your father. I know some of our parents is gone like mine. My father died when I was two years old. I never knew my father. So I don't have any, any, any painful history because he, he died when I was a baby. But my mama ain't always been the best mama. She had five boys and two girls. All of us got different daddies. That's seven different fathers. We ain't always had the best of everything. I love and honor my mama. I thank God for my mama because she could have left us, but she stayed down. Many days she thought about leaving and never coming back. She told me, but the love of my kids kept bringing me back. She could have been and walked off, but she kept coming back because she loved us. Right. Now, some of y'all may have been abandoned. Your mama may have walked off and left you, but still honor her. And that what you can't do, say, God, help me do. Somebody give God a hand. Let's go to number two. Let's go to number two. Oh, my God. Then you got the calling phase. After you go through the shallow phase, the shallow phase, now you got to be called. Now you got to be, uh, yeah, now you got to be called. Let's deal with this calling. Everybody got one. Are you ready to go through the pain to discover it? I hope y'all caught that, Barry. I said, everybody got to call it, but are you ready to go through the pain to discover it? Are you ready to go through stuff that you don't understand? Why me? God, please let this cup pass. See, you finna have all that. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Lord, close this thing down so I can go on back to this cush life. My God, this calling phase is heavy. Lord, you sure? You what, what, Let it be Francella. Let it be Sharon. Let it be Let it be Barry. God, I don't want to go through this. If it be thy will, let this pain pass me. 
the calling phase. Woo, my God, everybody want a platform and nobody want to go through the calling phase. Let's deal with it. The calling phase, my God, is a fresh awareness of God's call on your life. Talking about the preparation for the next. The fresh, fresh, fresh awareness of God's call on your life. Some of you need to renew because you know what you're called to do, but it scared you and you abandoned it. Guess what? Because you walked away from your calling and abandoned it don't mean your calling left. So when you decide to come to your senses, come on, prodigal sons, that calling is going to be right there talking about knock, knock, knock. Are you ready now? So guess what? That pain you tried to avoid, guess what? You finna go through it. If you're going to ever be what God calls you to be, you got to go through that pain. Oh, my God. Psalms 119, 71 said it was good for me, Shay, that I was afflicted. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Affliction has a way of guiding you. Affliction has a way of being accomplished. <laughs> Affliction has a way of moving you towards God's perfect plan and perfect will for your life. I like when I'm going through trials. I preach and submit better. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. They didn't catch that. Come on. Come on. When you're going through trials, you submit better. Because when you're going through trials, you're like, Lord, help me. God, forgive me. God, I'm sorry. God, if you find anything, show me. I know I'm fearfully one of you made, God. What did I do? I'm saying, you see, it's a different type of cry when you're going through stuff. It's a different type of pursuit when you're going through something. That's why the psalmist says, good for me that I was afflicted. You need some affliction. It makes you and mold you. Quit running from the calling because in your calling, there's affliction connected to it. You want everything. Well, guess what? That everything has pain attached to it. Every good and perfect gift come from above. Why not try the tribulations? Them is good gifts. Every good and perfect gift, the code, come from above. Trials, persecution, hardships, misunderstood, lied on, talked about. That's good for us. When you submit it to Romans 8, 28. Good night to come to church, any day. Calling phase. Somebody look at you and say calling phase. Call Come on, look at your name and say calling phase. Call Come on, and move stock and sell. Look at each other and say calling phase. Calling phase. Call you know what you're speaking in this life? Oh, my she kid, la la Pain, preparation, suffering. Look at your name and say calling phase. Call Some of y'all don't even want to look. They like, ah. David stood up dripping with oil of royalty, y'all, and God's anointing. He was anointed. You get that from uh, 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 1 Samuel 16. Write this down. 1 Samuel 16, verses 13 and 14. Matter of fact, I'm going to read it so I can bring context to the scripture. 1 Samuel 16, 13 and 14. It says, so David stood there among his brother Samuel. Brother Samuel took the flask of olive oil. He had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Jump down to verse 14. Now the spirit of the Lord had left Saul. And the Lord sent a tormenting spirit to fill him with depression and fear. Pastor Madeline, Pastor Francetta, and Pastor Champ, Pastor Teresa, watch this right here. The Bible said the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. That same spirit left David's spiritual father. That same spirit came powerful upon David. But that same spirit left his spiritual father, Saul. You can't become contaminated and think the spirit of God is going to rest on you. You can't live any kind of way and think the spirit of God is going to abide inside of you. So guess what, my God? The spirit of the Lord, woo, thank, you, thank God just gave us some, woo. Oh my God, soon as the Spirit of the Lord, oh, thank you. Ah, my, she came out of my, soon as the Spirit of the Lord came upon his son David, it left his father. <laughs> oh, soon as it came upon David, the next verse said it left Saul. God said, I ain't going to share my spirit. I'm not going to share my glory. I'm not going to share my glory with no unclean thing. Yeah. God said, I'm a jealous God. Boy, yeah. I, 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 you, Saul, you didn't remove yourself from covenant. You, you're full of yourself. Too much pride. 
You got too much anger, too much bitterness, too much resentment. You know the story. My God. And God said, I can't live there. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I, I can't give this double anointing. I, I can't bless you no farther, my God. You done got too contaminated, my God. You started off with a right heart, Saul. My God. But now you didn't let your, uh, your kingdom, my God. You, didn't, you begin to worship. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Don't worship it. Worship the God who created it. Yeah. See, he got out of line, baby. He came in intoxicated off of his own harvest. He forgot what it was like to be in the shadow phase. When God took him to the mountain, my God, he forgot. So God said, I got to show you something. I ain't finna show my glory with all your honor. I gave you that honor so that you could honor me. But you starting to worship the honor instead of worshiping the God who gave you the honor. So now I got to take it from you. Lord, have mercy. It's just revelation. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Y'all done heard me preach this. They ain't never spoke this in the atmosphere. I asked for prophetic. Oh, it's falling. It's a time for it. Sometimes you can want something before God ready to give it to you. Quit getting frustrated because God ain't gave you something. Just keep being faithful. Keep shelling sheep down. Keep flipping them pages. Keep reading. Keep praying. When it's time for God to give you the tongues, he'll give you the tongues. When it's time for him to give you revelation, he'll give you revelation. Quit beating yourself up because you ain't got something somebody else got. Quit comparing yourself by somebody else. You might not can't handle what she got or he got, so you want something that you can't handle. So something that's supposed to bless you will curse you because you can't handle it. Quit asking for stuff that you ain't ready for. Say, God, don't give me nothing. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> oh, you caught me in the spirit, dog. Let me get it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm. Oh, my God. First, this is Proverbs 30. See, I was in the one-year reading today. I was reading my one-year reading today like I do every day. And I read what I'm supposed to read to you. So now I'm standing up before the people preaching the gospel. And so that what I read about 7 this morning, now God for the speaking in the atmosphere at 7 at night. Proverbs 30, verse 8. It says, first, help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. Proverbs 30, verse 9 says, For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, Who is the Lord? And if I am too poor, I may steal and thus insult God's holy name. He said, Just give me just enough to stay balanced. If I get too rich, I might deny you. If I get too poor, I might become a, 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 a thief. That's why you got to read your Bible because you never know. The Bible says when the time comes, the Spirit of God will bring back to remembrance. That's what you put down in your spirit. That ain't in my notes, but I read it for a time such as this. Quit asking for stuff that's going to cause you to turn away from God. And God loves you enough where he'll allow you to have stuff just to show you that you weren't ready for it. Now you got to suffer seven more years before he give it back to you the next seven. It's called seven years of famine and the seven years of freedom. Don't stay too long. Don't stay too long because you get ahead of them. Now you're in seven years of phantom when you're supposed to be in seven years of plenty. Yeah. Yeah. Read the book. David stood there dripping with oil of royalty, God's anointing. Here is, here, here is your staff. He said, he said, oh, my God, after David, my God, after, after, after uh, Samuel anointed David, dripping with oil. Oh, my God, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, this is strategic, too. So guess what? I need that stick right there. <laughs> oh, God, know what you need to preach the gospel. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Come on, Dominique. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm. Mm. So that Dominique is the young 17-year-old David. I'm Samuel. I just called the young David from the backside over there on the mountain. Ebo shike da da ba shanda. Receive it. She came out of some matter. She came out of the Bashanda. She came out of the Bashikido. She came out of Bashanda. Importation. Break every chain. Break every yoke. No unhealthy attachments. Hadaba. She came She could continue to deliver. Continue to deliver. Continue to touch the root system, Father God. Mm. Continue, continue, continue that which you have started. 
speak Philippians 1 and 6 <laughs> he who begun a good work over you shall complete it to the day of Jesus Christ return mm. so father God I speak that healing I speak that healing I speak that healing I speak that healing deeper work deeper work uproot 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Transfer, God. Transfer. Transfer. Your 2019 won't look like 2018. That what you stumbled over in 2018, <laughs> those battles that you lost in 2018, you can't lose in 2019. <laughs> the mindset, my God, my God, my God. All the things that try to take your mind. Oh my God, you can't let the enemy have your mind in 2019. Oh my God, no alcoholism, my God. Oh my God, no problems in the home, no problems in the marriage, my God. Your 2019, I decree and declare, shall not. But you determine that, son, not God. You determine that. Receive the impartation. Mindset. Mindset. And so now David was anointed by Samuel. And so David, my God, Samuel gave David back his staff and said, now go with the anointing and the king's anointing. And keep messing with those sheep because your time ain't come yet. Even though I just laid my hands on him and prophesied in his life and began to speak blessings that his father just decreed over his life. See, that wasn't for sure. That's apostolic. Come on, somebody. Y'all don't, y'all need to go with me. See, you're trying to hold me. You can't hold me there, baby. Oh my God, I didn't went on somewhere. I'm just here in the natural, but I'm somewhere else in the spirit. I can't get no nobody to say nothing right there. You see me in the flesh, but this ain't flesh, baby. This is spirit, my God. And so after David was anointed, after David was anointed, after David was anointed, after David was anointed. It still one time yet. Still one time yet. Still one time yet. Go on back to doing what your customer doing. You ain't ready. You ain't. I promise you, you ain't ready. Get on back over there. You got an anointing and you got the king's anointing, but you still ain't ready. Still need some more training. Ooh, Pastor, Minister Peoples, man, you preaching. When you gonna start your church? You know, I just come right preaching. Come sit right beside Bishop again. Somebody call, you know what I'm saying, go to Oklahoma City, go to Oakland, go to Sacramento, wherever, all the places I was preaching and stuff. I go preach, my God. My God, they fly me, they fly me out, and hold my signs up and say, this is for minister people to come on, and I don't have to pick up no bags and all of those type of stuff. And I stayed humble, went right back and sat beside my father. Got trained some more. When the call came again, I flew on out. I said flew on out, my God, and went where I needed to go and did what God needed me to do. And when I got through doing the assignment, guess what I did? I came right back and humbled myself. It's good to be trained, baby. And came right back and humbled myself and sat right beside the man of God. And, said, and, and, and they supported him. Not talking about how I could preach better than that. Oh, no, I just got to lead five people to Christ. They flew me out. They got picked up my bags. And, and I, I flew first class and all that. You know, hey, that's a good word, bitch. That's okay. No, nah, when he's preaching, hey, preach, bitch, preach the God. Right there supporting his number one fan. When a liquor in the inside of me. That's why the map to is on now. Somebody give God a hand. See, that's too heavy. Woo, Geneva, that's too heavy for him. Geneva, that's too heavy for him. Oh, my God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so, therefore, even though he was anointed, son, watch this, write this down. Timing is everything with God. Timing. Timing. It's going to get better for you. You hear me, daughter? I'm looking at you and I see you feeling. It's going to get better. Who, Daisy, you hear me? Timing. Ariana, you hear me? Sierra, you hear me? Tevin, y'all hear me? Kalea, are you listening to your pastor? Timing is everything. Timing. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, there's a time under heaven for everything. There's a time to be born, there's a time to die. There's a time to sleep and there's a time to get up. There's a time to work and there's a time to rest. There's a time to pray and there's a time not to pray. Oh, you got to get in God's rhythm. I taught y'all the rhythm of God. You need God's rhythm in 2019. I'm speaking prophetically into your life. Timing is everything. My God, we may not, we may have, we may not, oh my God, we may have nothing on our outward appearance. Listen to me. And nothing on our, in our surroundings or circumstance to indicate the true royalty. But look at verse 7. When you look at it, David had nothing. 
Look at verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearances or height. So he didn't look too good. He was short like me. But I think I, 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 he didn't look good. But I, I can't get nobody. <laughs> it really is. Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected my God, him, the Lord, my God, doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearances. Don't you know, as I taught my ministers and my uh, ordained, quit letting people disqualify you. Ain't nobody perfect because they got a title. Don't you know you do more harm to your own self because you disqualify yourself? What's keep you in frustration instead of moving in your purpose? Who told you because you come from poverty that you couldn't excel? Who told you that you couldn't own something? Who told you that you, that you would never be nothing, my God, and you just succumbed to that? Who told you that you're going to be sorry just like your daddy? Who told you you're going to be sorry and pregnant with 18 kids just like your mama, and you just accepted that? Don't you know the enemy, my God, start working? That's why the talking is teaching from newborn to five is so critical because the most important years of a baby is their first five years when they formulate their brain, my God. Oh, my God, the enemy start working on you, my God, when you're a newborn baby, my God. The Bible says that Herod, my God, in the New Testament made a decree, Tina, and kill every child, my God, that's two years old or young. The enemy been after the male seed since the Bible days, my God. Kill every child that's two years old or young, male-wise. Yeah. And so, therefore, the enemy will use that same father that I told you to, my God, to respect the physician, my God, to speak death into your life. Yeah. Slap me upside your head, abuse you, you're taking advantage of you, stuff like that. And God, you tell me to respect that? Yes, God, tell you to respect because his ways is not your ways. That's right. That's right. That's right. My thoughts is not your thoughts. I know it's painful. Yeah. If you're going to follow God, you got to be flexible. Hmm. Yeah. Calling things. Anointing has to do with granting authority and power to do something. You get that from verse, chapter 10, verse 6. I'm going to read it. 10, verse 6. It says, at that time, the spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and you will be changed into a different person. The Holy Spirit changes you into a different person. I repented at 6 o'clock in intercessory prayer and said, God, forgive me for trying to do anything in this ministry by way of the flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It takes the Spirit of the Lord to channel and move this type of work. You can't move and birth and move this work, my God, by the flesh. It's frustrated to kill you and me. A lot of you trying to make changes by the flesh, and that's why we frustrated and burnt out and wore out and come into church and we're going to give God nothing but leftovers. Mm -hmm. We're trying to do everything by way of the flesh. I said, God, if I, every area where I have tried to push by the flesh, forgive me and show me. So you got to be real with God like that if you're going to go to that level. Got to be transparent. Because you know why I'm able to be like that? Because you ain't got a heaven and hell to put me in. And y'all need to see if pastor can keep it on a dollar, then I better keep it on a dollar. It's called transparency. Transparency brings deliverance to people. Too many pastors and leaders hide. I want you free. Lord, don't never let me build nothing by way of the flesh in this church. Forgive me. That was today, right over there. It's probably why God is sitting on me now. The Bible said the Spirit of the Lord has come upon the man of God powerfully. Ooh, my God, what do you need God to powerfully do in your life? Invite his spirit. But understand the spirit ain't going to rest on anything. How much scripture you quote? Jesus said clean the inside of the cup and then the outside shall be clean. The kingdom of heaven, the Bible says, is within Old Testament is external. New Testament is in within. Wherever you go, God goes. If you're full of the Spirit. Mm. Let me give you this and get you out of here. My God, the, the, the symbol of the Holy Spirit that came powerfully upon David, my God, was the anointing, ooh, my God, oil on his head. Write that down. Write that down, Francetta. Pastor Francetta. Anointing on David's head. The Holy Spirit. That's symbolic for the anointing that was on David's head. Y'all got that? The symbol of the Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus was the dove. Write down the dove. And the Holy Spirit coming upon the disciples, Pastor Teresa, with tongues of fire. Do you got the Spirit? Or do you got religion? <laughs> uh, oh my God, I'm trying to. When you got the Spirit, there's going to be some evidence. The dove. Think about a dove. Dove, you're so pretty. Why are you so bitter? 
Why your aroma so nasty? Do you really got the spirit? How much you don't like nobody? Dove is gentle. They pretty. Oh, my God. And then the fire. Don't criticize me because I got passion. I got fire. I just gave it to you. When the Spirit of the Lord come upon you, it's going to be some fire. Yeah. Tongues of fire. I ain't just talking about speaking in tongues. Who am I got passion? Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Passion is not in volume either. Yeah. Passionate for the things of God, as your father, grandfather told you this past Sunday. I'm just passionate, woman of God, for the things of God. Because I remember what I used to be yeah. before I became who I am today. But it was a system, Diane, the anointing from the Holy Spirit. Then the dove ascended, confirmation, affirmation on Jesus. Even Jesus needed a witness. And he was God in the flesh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He told John, you got to baptize me. I can't move yes, forward. Oh, too. my God, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, Jesus couldn't move forward, son, into purpose, into ministry. God in the flesh could not move forward into John the Baptist, who was created to specifically baptize Jesus. This is a must. See, some of you can't move until you get the mandate. Uh, Lord, this prophetic gift. I can't wait to 2019 hit. Somebody give God a hand so I can get y'all out of here, baby. You prayed for it, Pastor Reese. It's, mad. it's falling. Mm. Let me give you this last one because I'm going I'm to leave that alone. Let's do this last one so I can finish. Who, by God, I'll be on on my secretary. I don't even know why I put these points together. You don't never finish. Before day to day word, day to day praying. When you read the Bible on a consistent basis, fasting, been on one all day, nothing but water. Add that to your life, fasting. Every last human being in there should at least fast once a day. I mean once a week, at least one time a week. Will you really give up something and sacrifice it to the Lord that increases God's anointing on your life? Can you, can, ooh, can you not pray for an hour? Jesus asked the disciples, can you not pray with me for an hour? I'm finna go to the cross behind you. And you mean to tell me that you don't love me enough to pray for an hour? You are that busy with flesh that you can't pray for an hour? You are that distracted with the world where you can't pray for an hour? That's why he said in Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom. Oh, if he'd have been seeking the kingdom, he would have prayed for an hour. But he was seeking everything but the kingdom. That's why he can't pray, because he's seeking everything but the kingdom. Ooh, let's look at this training phase. Go to point three. Let me get you out of here. Thank you for the time, but I got to give you this. After you go through the shadow phase, come on. Calling, now you got to be trained. You can't step past. It, uh, every one of them matters. Deep lessons is learned in humble places. And then God got to prepare you and anoint you for your calling. And then because you're called, now go back there now so I can train you. You can't get around it. Some of you might got to try to abort the process. There's systems. There's steps in God. You can't get to the one without the other. That's why if you get something too soon and you ain't ready for it, it's going to mock you instead of bless you. And then you got to come back and repent yeah. like he did. And, but sometimes you got to let people fall. Yeah. I told my leaders this past Monday, my God, I ain't afraid to fail in front of you. Not sexual. Not habitual. Yeah. Not in sin. I'm not talking about their fail. Yeah. I'm talking about making a mistake yeah. and being ready to go back and shift something and recorrect something. Come on, somebody. See, many of us, my God, just because you did it don't mean you got you to keep doing it. If it ain't working, change it. But my, oh my God, T.D. Jake say most pastors, my God, when they implement something, my God, because they worry about what people think, they'll keep letting something go even though they know it's not working because they worry that they, they don't want the people to think they're a failure. Mm-hmm. I told my wife today I'm going to make many more mistakes as long as they're not critical. Thank you, Lord. That's good. Thank you, Lord. That's another transparent moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're going to make mistakes with God. Right. I don't got all the answers. Oh, my God. So let's look at this training phase so I can le- release you. My God. It's the formation of the mind. The training phase. The formation of the mind. And the skills that you're going to need for your next season. So I'm getting ready to train you for the next season. The formation of the mind. As a man thinks, so he becomes. <laughs> Leadership development. 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. Leadership development. You can't have people, my God, that's gifted with leadership, my God, not trained to be leaders over people when they're not trained. Reconstructing the model. Y'all seen it? Ain't your fault. It's my fault. Trying to be too nice. Trying to obey you instead of obey God. Not 2019. You will never learn to lead until you first learn to follow. You never learn to lead. Quit trying to be out front when you ain't shoving no sheep down. Right. What is sheep dung? That was all that cow manure. I mean, that sheep. But let me be careful. Y'all know what sheep dung yeah. is? David, the, ooh, he was anointed with a king's anointing, woman of God, but he was shoveling sheep dung. He wasn't too prideful. He got a king's anointing. That's the next king, shoveling sheep dung. That's humble shadow beginnings. Mm, mm, mm. It, it takes that. For your next. Don't never get full of yourself. Cause how big the big bank account get? I don't care how what kind of clothes you wear. I don't care how many people say rah, rah, rah. Just like they say Hosanna. The next word is crucified, crucified. Don't get full of yourself, I promise you. That's right. Mm, mm, mm. If you have not been faithful in, what, in, in another man's, my God, who would give you what you own? What's your own? Luke 16, 12. Luke 16, 12, write that down. My God, I want to read that right. Luke 16, 12. Because it reminds me of our situation here with Pastor Jeff then. Luke 16, 12. Where is that at right there? Let me see my glasses. There I go. And if you are not faithful with, a, with, with, with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? Luke 16, 12. If we can't tend this, how are we going to get our own? Are y'all with me so far? Yes, sir. That's training. God will allow you to serve somebody else. Pick up their stuff. Wait on them. Clean up behind them. Clean their bathrooms. Or do all that type of stuff. Training you. Because he's getting ready to you. He's he going to give you yours. But if you can't be found faithful in somebody else's, on, you're too powerful, my God, to look out for somebody else. Yeah, 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 yeah. From Greenwood to a, a, a church of the gospel from the Pastor Humphreys to my own. Each phase was necessary to be where I'm at today. Right. Faithfully, y'all know, faithfully yeah, served Bishop. Yeah. Pastor Chelp and Sharon's with me, faithfully served Pastor Humphreys at, a, uh, 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 at Church of the Gospel for nine months before going over Christ started. Each lesson along the way, yeah. I served yeah. the men of God. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Faithful in another man's vineyard. That's why we're here today, Diane. That what you sow, you reap. Fruit from labor. You're reaping benefits because your pastor did it right and still does it right. You sit up here, my God, in over $36,000, $33,000 square feet, my God, because your pastor did it right. Giving God the glory. Training phase, shadow phase, calling phase, and training phase. Are y'all with me so far? Many effective leaders are shaped by first following the lead of another. Many effective leaders are shaped First, by following the lead of another. Boy, don't get me started looking at y'all. See what I'm trying to say? My God. Effective leaders are trained by following someone else. By following someone else. By submitting to someone else. By honoring and respecting someone else. That builds effective leaders. You know how many people, my God, Mother Margaret, my God, that got mantles, my God, that they mishandled? They got a platform and couldn't keep the platform because they didn't serve right. They didn't transition right. They didn't shift to the next season right. None of that stuff, my God, disqualified them when they got there. Training phase. Certain things that we went through could have destroyed the church, but God. Mm, mm, mm. Learning to minister to the troubled hearted is part of the preparation for every leader. Learning to minister to the troubled hearted is preparation training for every leader. Many people <laughs> ah, bail out on this phase right here. Many people tap out and quit. They'll roll with you, my God, on the shadow, on the calling, but when he put that hand, mm-hmm. when he put that squeeze, right. when he starts saying no, yeah. when he starts saying change that, stop that, 
I would have had God gave you grace over there, but I can't give you grace. Now you got a new mantle on your life. Now you got to do something better. Mm-hmm. See, I'm trying to say this is where they, the training phase, oh my God, will show me your real heart, your real motive. If I got a voice in your ear, that's right. That's right. if what the Spirit of God say through your pastor really matters. The training phase. And as a young pastor, and I'm done. Let me close the book. Y'all know not close the book. That means it's time to be quiet from the message. And as a young pastor, I have to be okay with being misunderstood. As a matter of fact, Minister Cornell doing 6 o'clock prayer played a song that confirmed it. Relationships will come and relationships will go. People will come and people will go. But God is right here. See, that if you had prayer, you would have caught that. Some of you, and I ain't putting them right down. Y'all stay with that. You could, mm. See, you miss things that prepare you for the next season. See, that right there, what Cornell, Cornell, that right there has prepared me. That, them, them words right there, hearing that, but has prepared me for anything that come my way. Because I got to understand. I pray to God that you always sitting on the front row with me, but I don't know. I pray that you stay with me because of what we have all been through, the family, but I don't know. I don't know, Pastor. I don't know, Pastor Teresa. I do know about this here, though. I'm being serious. It ain't going nowhere. I don't know, Jackie. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Stacy. I do know about her. I don't know, Lily. But I knew, do know right there. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Moostock and Sarah. But I do know right there, Valerie. I don't know, Odetta. But I, knew no, I do know my classmate Valeria is going to be here. I feel Tina going to be with me. Who else, Pastor, talk like this? Because I'm trying to prepare you for your next. There's people you're going to see. And there's people you won't see. That's why you got to allow God to deal with the insecurities. People going to leave up out of your life. And if they came and planted and they watered, let God get an increase now. Stand to your feet.